Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I am crazy stoked because everybody knows that my favorite subject out there, outside of coaching, of course, is real estate. And I have an absolute rock star, my good friend, Amy Terry, who's out in Colorado, which I'll be at in a couple of days or tomorrow speaking. Um, and she absolutely crushes it out there. If you check out her social, she's always doing the business. She's in new construction. She had this really cool detached garage that you walk into a bar basement. Like she is fantastic with what she does in the real estate world. And she believes that real estate is probably the best wealth vehicle that you can have to increase your net worth and live, you know, the life of your dreams on the back end of your life when you're deciding to do that R word and retire. And Amy, thank you so, so much for coming on. Please introduce yourself to Time to Shine Today Podcast Varsity Squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? Ooh, green. green. And I think I just associate it with liveliness and freshness and spring and just yeah. a happy color. And it's in your color wheel. You're Which I have it, it on today. <laughs> yeah, you're rocking it today. Like everything, it's yeah. like she, if you're watching on Vimeo or YouTube, she's absolutely stunning. Um, and she's absolute killer in the uh, in the real estate world. And Amy, I'd love, because, you know, we, we did a little off-camera talking and we talked a little war stories and this and that about real estate. But what, you, you went to college, correct? And graduated, right? I did. How much of that degree yeah. do you use in real estate? Well, my dad reminds me constantly how happy he is. He paid for that bachelor's degree. Uh, you know, I, I think the, the value in that degree was more the, the networking and the yeah. experience Thank you for saying um, that, that yeah. I had during school. Yeah. I don't regret it at all, but it doesn't really apply to, especially because my degree is in criminology. Okay. I was, you know, my path originally was law school. That's where I was headed. Okay. Uh, so it, it doesn't really, but I still think it was a really valuable experience and valuable education. You made a mad awesome point because like I'll speak to like part of my pro bono stuff that I do is I go and mastermind with teenagers, right? And they'll be like, Fergie, you never went to college. You're like, should I go? I'm like, absolutely, you should go, you know, because, you know, I did time in the military, did six tours in the Gulf War, whatever. You know, I came back and I tried college and I was like, wait a minute, but it was just more fun and my networking began in the military. Like what you mentioned about college, networking and learning people skills is critical, correct? And that's critical across real estate? It is 100%. But I also will say, if college isn't your thing, mm -hmm. there's so many other avenues, as you obviously are a great example. I loved school. Like if someone would pay for me to continue to go to school, I still would. Right. I was just a total nerd. But not everybody is. I think there's so many paths to success. So sure. I think it's important, but I also think it's not the path, especially the cost of college now. Right. Uh, and that was partly why I decided not to go to law school because okay. I looked at the expense and I wasn't a hundred percent, hundred percent sure I wanted to practice law. So gotcha. decided to kind of take a little diversion, but yeah, I mean, the people skills are everything in real estate. Absolutely. Gotcha. Yeah. It's in the like, it's funny, we were talking again off mic about being a real estate agent or a realtor, whatever you want to want to call us, you know, we're, we're kind of like the bottom, like you have this big ladder and it's like at the bottom are like car salesmen, attorneys than us. You know what I'm saying? It's like in, in Florida, we say that, you know, part of a prerequisite of being a Florida resident is having your real estate license, right? It's like there's realtors like everywhere now, but then yes. there's you know, a lot of them might do a deal a year and understand that, you know, they wake up every day unemployed, right? They have to find someone to interview them to sell them a house, list their house, rent them a house, whatnot. How do you get up every day and, and, and get up and get after it and serve people? You know, I'm really passionate about helping people build wealth through real estate. It's real estate has truly changed my life and opened up so many opportunities for me. That's what I get excited about is working with families and, and changing the trajectory of their lives and generational wealth. And, you know, a lot of times this last year, I've talked more people out of selling. You know, I really love to help people turn their primary into a rental as they're mm. upgrading. So, you know, and it clicks for people. They're like, well, wait, you're talking yourself out of a transaction. And Thank you. well, yes. my goal is not to sell your house. My goal is to help you build long-term wealth. And that was a big shift in my business. I had a hard time, you know, I got my license at 22, having the mind shift of being an attorney that is a little more respected to being a salesperson. But when I shifted my mindset that really I'm a consultant and I'm, I'm here to help people build long-term wealth and I'm consulting them on the largest purchase I'll ever make, that's when everything shifted for me and I started really enjoying it more. I think my clients viewed me differently. 
um, you know, everything is how you're, how you feel on the inside and, and what your intention is in that interaction that shifts everything. So yeah, I'm really excited about helping people, you know, you don't have like that real estate gives you the opportunity to do a job that you love, but maybe you don't make a ton of money, sure. but you can build wealth in another way. So that's what I get excited about is that it really can be a game changer for a family. That, that is fantastic that you're willing to walk away from a tranny or transaction to help somebody build their wealth because one, it, it, you're helping them period. That's service. And two, you know, you don't know who they know. You know, they might say this person actually gave a, you know, what about my sitch mm -hmm. and wants me mm -hmm. to keep my wealth. And a lot of times if they're, instead of selling it, you, you flip it into a net flip it, but you turn it into a rental for them, maybe find them a renter and then make a little money on it. But also they're probably purchasing another house. Are they not? Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, and that's part of the hurdle right now. It, like my sphere group is a lot of people that kind of need to upgrade, mm -hmm. but they've got a 3% interest rate. And so wow. it's really hard to make that leap, but I'm like, look, we don't have to let go of that 3% interest rate. And the good news is when interest rates go up, rents go up. Right. So we look at the numbers. Can you rent your current house to offset your new mortgage payment? And it all, you know, at the end of the day, then typically they can keep their monthly payments about the same. And now they right. have two properties. Uh, yeah. So that's really the route. I'm especially pushing people when they've got a great interest rate and a yeah. property that would, that would rent really well. And they can always like date the rate and marry the house. Right. So it's like, you know, yes. on the new house that they buy, they can always refi it because the rates are cyclical, which, you know, you've went through a few cycles in 18 years and my 20 something years, you know, it, we, we see that. So they can always refinance and it's like a savings account that they're just going to just continue to make. All right. That, that, that's very cool. So what do you think then when you're starting to work with a client in within real estate investing and really starting to talk to them about it? Because I can hear the passion. I can see the passion. Like, what do you think their biggest blind spot is when it comes to real estate investing? I think a big one is even whether they're buying their first home or investment is that you have to have 20% down. Mm. I think that's silly for people to wait that long. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I think of the, honestly, the, I keep harping on it, but like people think about going to buy a new rental property where you do need 20, 25% down, you're going to have an uh, investor interest rate. Really the best way, and it's kind of house hacking is to live in a property, move, continue moving. Mm -hmm. um, and then the property management, I think people are very scared. They've heard a horror story from their uncle or whoever, <laughs> um, you know, of, I oh, will never own a rental because this person you know, rode right. a motorcycle through the living room of right. my uncle's house. Right. So I think that's also that piece of, um, you know, having a good property manager and surrounding yourself with good people in general can avoid a lot of those yeah. nightmare situations. Right. So I think a lot of it, uh, whether they're an investment or a primary is talking through their fears, uh, and kind of alleviating what they have going on in their head of why they don't want to do something. Right. Yeah, they'll, they'll make excuses to, you know, go walk away while they watch other people being successful in it when they have someone like you that will help them with it, you know, so what I, what, with me, I, when I built, started building mine, it's like I ran out of money in a sense where it's like I could only leverage myself so much. Um, and so what I would do is like, I literally in Michigan at the time, I would look for people that drove, you know, this is the late nineties, early 2000s. So a hundred thousand dollar car was a lot of money, you know, and I would yeah. give them like a business card that said, um, earn 12% return secured by real estate. That's all it said on the front and on the back, it kind of gave it a breakdown. Hey, you're the lot first loss payee, you know, in the first, uh, hazard insurance payout. And stuff. So I really, I started raising money like that. Is there any creative ways that you use to help people raise money to, to purchase real estate? I haven't done any creative financing in that sense, but I've definitely done some owner carry situations okay. where, you know, if the, is, the squad doesn't know. Sure. So an owner carries a situation where someone owns a property free and clear or close to free and clear. And then you can come in as a buyer and essentially the owner becomes the mortgage holder. Gotcha. So you do the same thing. You'll have a deed of trust and a note and an agreement on what you will pay them monthly. You do take ownership of the property. They just now have the note on the property. Uh, and especially when you get people 
people that are older and retired and you know you think you tell them like look you can either cash out now or you can get this much a month with interest Ooh. over the next 20 years or whatever you work out so that a lot of times can be a win-win for everybody right. um, particularly if they'll agree to like a hundred percent financing type of situation right that, that's that's fantastic it's kind of like a I wouldn't say like maybe like a uh, like a lease option with lease with an option to buy or is it in stone that they've got to purchase that at like is there like a bloom time that they have got to come up with the rest of the money or is it negotiated? So, oh yeah, it depends on it depends on the note. I mean, it's exactly the you're actually buying the property, so there's no um, rent to own. Okay. You're, you're closing on the property, you have the title to the property, um, but the owner carries the note. So it's just like they can also foreclose on you if you're not making mortgage payments, just right. like a, a lender can. But you can also, down the road, same thing, you can refinance, buy that seller out. Right. So it's just all going to break down to what's in your deed of trust, just like any other um, loan that you get of what, you know, you just have to come to agreement that everybody works for everybody. Right. But they yeah. can charge an above market interest rate if they want to, if they're going to grant 100% financing. Sure. Right, yeah, they could do that. There's no usury there um, with by, by with 100% financing. And is do you, do they generally have kind of like a balloon payment? Like they'll pay for five years and then like a big balloon at the end for the rest. Or do you ever structure them like that? You know, typically I do at least 10 years. Okay. If if the person is looking to buy to actually live in it, mm -hmm. um, I've also done some situations which this is a little out of the box, but I've done oh. like partner flips. Ooh, so okay. let's say a seller has a property that needs a lot of work, but they either don't have the cash or the know-how or don't want to deal with it. I'll bring in an investor where they sort of partner. The owner continues to own the property. Mm -hmm. The investor comes in, fixes it up, and then they have an agreement of whether they split the proceeds 50-50 or, or whatever. So that's great for the flipper because mm -hmm. they don't have to come in with any financing or cash out of pocket other than getting the renovations done. Uh, right. And then once the property closes, the seller and the flipper get to, to work out the profits there. So that's oh. another creative way if you don't have a lot of cash. Right. Um, and it, that takes some time, right? Because you've got to find the right seller. Oh, absolutely. Um, but it's a good opportunity, you know, especially like this year, I've done a ton of properties that people have inherited. Um, so you've got, you know, a 1960s ranch that's almost all original. Right. They've inherited it. They don't want to deal with it. But as an investor, I walk in and I'm like, God, you guys, like if you sell it as is, you're leaving a lot of money on the table versus coming right. in and renovating it. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, you like hold their hand and kind of walk them through that if they bring you in on the deal, correct? Yeah, essentially, we kind of say like, look, here is you break down the numbers. Like if we sell as is, this is what you're going to net. Okay. If you let us bring in our investor and renovate the property, this is what we think you'll net. And then they make a decision, hand us the keys. We either sell it as is or we do the renovation for them. Gotcha. And you yourself are an investor, correct? I am. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Is, is there any, then maybe you're starting to work with somebody that wants to get into that wealth vehicle of real estate. Is there any good question that you wish they would ask you, but never do? Uh, I mean, in general, I wish that people vetted agents yes. <laughs> more so than they do, especially on the buy side. You know, it's very common for people to interview agents for a listing, mm -hmm. but on the buy side, they usually Ooh. end up just picking whoever shows them the first house or whoever they cross paths with. I think it's yeah. really important to make sure you're working with, especially with investment where there's, you know, some more risk that the person right. knows what they're doing. Um, so yeah, I think in general, you know, and it's becoming a little more common. I've had a few um, buyer consults in the last few years where I know that they're interviewing multiple agents. Okay. But in general, I, I think consumers should do that yes. um, and just surround themselves with with good people have, you know, the right inspectors, the right lending, the right agent, right team, um, yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. That, that's so yeah. Critical. I think, I think also just people being upfront about what their end goal is, and then I can help them sort through if, if that's realistic so that they're not disappointed in the process. Yeah. That's beautiful. Like in like Stephen Covey would say, begin with the end in mind, right? Like share the end goal. So you can provide the path that's going to, yes. um, that's going to help them the most. So have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Yes. Okay, let's get in that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let's go back to the, 
obviously you've been out of college for 18 years. Let's go back to the double deuce, the 22 year old Amy. What kind of knowledge okay. nuggets might you drop on her? Not so much a changing a thing because you've lived a pretty damn good life, but what kind of at the 22 year old Amy, what kind of knowledge nuggets might you drop on her maybe to shorten the learning curve, blast through or level up just a little bit quicker? I would say, especially getting into the real estate industry, don't take everything so personal. I cried a lot my first couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, as you grow and do more business, you realize 99.9% .9 of the time people's decisions have nothing to do with you. Um, it's usually something going on in their life or they're not being upfront about what's going on. Um, but it is I didn't have very thick skin at that age and uh, you know, other agents can be cruel. Clients can be cruel. And I started with all internet leads, which is just exhausting. You're proving oh, yourself yeah. over and over again and people have no loyalty. So no. yeah, I would say just don't take everything so personally. Don't let it ruin your day. Um, and then, yeah, I think mindset is something that's always in, evolved for me, but sure. you know what you focus on expands. So yes. really focus on the positive and there is a positive in every market. And there is a market in every market. Yeah. Uh, you know, I coach that a lot with my agents. Yeah. They're frustrated with stuff sitting on the market now. But I'm like, you guys, a year and a half ago, you couldn't get anybody under contract. Right. So, like, choose your <laughs> choose yeah. your positive here. Yeah. Uh, like so, yeah, good, mindset, I think, dictates all of it. I love that. Like, my good friend Gary Keller would say, you know, shift. You know, you've got to shift with, I remember when short sales were big and everybody's like, oh shit, man, like, what am I going to do? I was like, dude, I'm doing short sales. Like I got an attorney that was an yeah. absolute beast, right? And I did between 2010 and 2014, 412 short sales. You know, in wow. short sales, you were double dipping them because you would list it, but you did the strategic default and sweat. I'm doing that with quotes where you would get them into another house, right? Yeah, and then, yeah. And then you would, and while you had them in the other house, you know, while they were buying it, you put their current house that was underwater on the market for like, let's say it would rent for like 2000 for like $6,000 on the market, right? And then you bought, they close the house, then you do the short sale on the, on that. So you're making two sales and sometimes three, because sometimes I'd find the buyer for their short sale. And you'd also mention another thing is that when you first get started in the business, like there's real estate, you could probably agree with me on this, Amy, is that it's probably the person's biggest investment they're making to that point in their life. So there's a ton of emotion on their side. As an agent, I would be like, not so, I didn't so much have commission breath, like, like, oh my gosh, I need this, I need this, but I cared so effing much that it was like my emotions got in the way of the transaction. They would see that and lose mm -hmm. trust in me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and that's, yes. that's, uh, thank you for sharing that. It's transparent as hell. And a lot of people don't. So thank you for sharing that. So Amy, how do you want your dash remembered? That little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life date and death date. Hopefully it's way down the road. But on that tombstone, how do you want people to remember your dash? Oh, geez, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, I really would like to pe people to remember me for genuinely wanting to help them grow and change and make their life better. Uh, you know, that is what I get excited about with clients and agents and mentoring and helping them grow a business. Uh, and whether that's, you know, sometimes I'm sitting down with agents and it's a conversation about them leaving the brokerage because it's like, this isn't a good fit. Right. You know, I want what's best for you, regardless of how it benefits me. So I would like, I would like to people to feel like I genuinely were looking out for their best interests and we're excited to help them grow and be the best that they could be. And, and I love that. And, and what you what, what you're doing, at least in the 15, 20 minutes we've been talking is I noticed that you do it for the intention, not the attention. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're out there, even on your social, you're actually showing the business. You're not showing, look what I drive. Look what I can do. Yeah, that's awesome. You're in the trenches and people respect that. That's why you're successful at it. So thank you for doing that. Like for reals. So what do you think people then, Amy, misunderstand the most about you? Uh, I think I have a really hard time asking for help. Okay. <laughs> So I would say I'm always kind of like, I've got it. I've got it. I can handle everything. Sure. Uh, and I think deep down, sometimes I need someone to like step in and, and right. help or, you know, take over things. Um, so I think that's like, you know, I'm not as kind of strong as I portray okay. or have it okay. all together all the time. All right. Does anything keep you up at night? Um, 
I mean, we're kind of digging into personal stuff, but I, I'm really happy with my career and I'm proud of what I've accomplished, but I just turned 40 this year and I'm okay. single and don't have kids. Okay. And I do start to feel like, you know, what am I building all this for? Okay. If I don't have, you know, I have amazing friends and family, but, sure. um, I think that primary family unit is, is missing. And that's, that's probably the biggest piece of my life that worries thank me. you for sharing that it's, it blows me away that you trust me <laughs> you know but it, that's what people like in an agent or somebody that's going to help them you know increase their wealth Some that's transparent and it's open i'm you know i'm 51 and i don't have kids and i'm right there with you to where it's like yeah i might be missing out on a legacy and stuff so that's where i really mm -hmm. pour into the youth you know like I, mm -hmm. I do free masterminds for high school students and and, and stuff like that and i really pour into other people and i have an awesome goddaughter you know, that basically, you know, milks me for the more money and stuff like that. But um, I love her. Right, Kelsey? But no, it's, it's you know, she's she's awesome. But I get it. So thank you for being honest about that. That's awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> how about what is Amy's definition of a life well lived? Uh, I would say deep connections, hmm. you know, whether that's family, friends or colleagues. Uh, I think as human beings, that's what we all need. Mm. Uh, financial freedom to be able to wake up and kind of choose what you want to do that day. Um, something silly for me, but ever since college, like not having to have an alarm. Like <laughs> I get to schedule yes. my day and, uh, you know, that's really important to me. So, and then I think also having purpose, you know, living, living a life and having a career that has meaning to you and, and there's purpose in it. And all um, four of those, like, just are surrounded by service. Every single one, your deep connections, your financial freedom, you know, you, and really what I coach when I do coach agents is like, listen, you want to live a life of options, not obligations, right? So, I mean, the, yes. how are we going to map that out, you know, to live a life of options? That's what I heard, but you didn't have to set your alarm. That's a freaking option. You know, if you had yeah. to be at the law firm in the mail room to start or something, you better be freaking there. But like now you're yes. able to through service <clears throat> to basically plant trees you're never going to sit in the shade of, right? You know, you're going to just keep planting and planting. That's that's awesome. Amy. thank you again. Thank you for being transparent. I know you don't haven't did too many of these yet. And hopefully I'm not like yeah. hitting you too hard, but you are rocking the mic, man. So really well, appreciate thank you. That. Thank you. And squad, we're going to take my good friend, realtor and real estate investor extraordinaire extraordinary Amy Terry through our loving up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates time to shine today podcast varsity squad we are back in Amy like I do speak in Colorado a lot so I'm gonna make it down you're in a Littleton right is that right I am yeah okay, it's a, cool. a southwest suburb of Denver gotcha so I will definitely make sure when I'm in Lodo next to to pop in and, and, and give you a visit maybe do a coffee or something and we'll maybe talk about some of these questions 15 20 minutes but today you got five seconds with no explanation. So they can all be answered that way. I promise you. You ready to level up? <laughs> okay. Yes. Awesome. Amy, what's the best leveling up advice anyone's ever given you? Uh, gosh. I, I, again, it's all internal. So whatever you believe about yourself or the world, that's going to affect everything Love around it. you. That's, that's awesome. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Meditation. Beautiful. So you see me walking down the street. You're like, man, Fergie looks like he's in his doldrums a little bit. What book might you hand me to level me up? Oh gosh, I'm a, it's Sean Aker, and it's uh, gosh, what is the name? It's something about happiness, the happiness advantage. I yes, think that's what it's that's called. That's it right there. Happiness. Yes, it is. Your most commonly used emoji when you text. Smiley face. Nicknames growing up. Uh, squirt. Four speed. Amers. You're being transparent. I love this. Love this. What give me a hidden talent and or superpower that you have that nobody knows about? Uh I would say I am extremely intuitive. Okay. Very cool. Chess checkers or monopoly? Ooh, uh monopoly. You better say that, realtor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Headline for your life. Oh, geez. That's really hard. Uh, I mean, it's got to be something around helping people service. Love it. Love it. Paying love it, it love forward. It. Any superstitions that you have? And don't lie. 
Um, well, I mean, I, I don't have a superstition, but I, I obviously I'm into meditation. So I have okay. crystals, which okay. I think some people would definitely think they're pretty hippy dippy, but no, yes, I, I do. I wear crystals. crystals as well. Absolutely. That's absolutely go to ice cream flavor. Uh, cookie dough. Beautiful. There's a sandwich called the four speed squirt. Build that sandwich for me. What's on it? Oh, geez. Um, I think it would, could I just make it like a burger? Love it. I'm right there with you. Bacon, <laughs> bacon burger. <laughs> Any good burger giants in Littleton? Oh gosh. Yeah. We actually have actually right next to our office. They just opened. Oh, it's a Denver man. icon, but it's now their second location. It's called the Cherry Cricket. It's the best burger oh, in Denver. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm there. Awesome. Favorite charity and or organization you like to give your time or money to? Uh, so I work with the Outdoor Lab Foundation, which is an outdoor law school for elementary school kids. Um, I actually was a counselor there in high school. Uh, and it's cool. The kids get to go up to the mountains for a week and do all kinds of hiking, camping, archery, um, learning about the wilderness and, and all that stuff. That's but it's, awesome. a, it's a cool opportunity, especially for kids that, you know, they just live in families and stuff like that's just not an option. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. And last question, you can elaborate on this one, but what's the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? Oh, geez. I would probably say 80s. Okay. We're best friends. It's fun, happy music. Well, I, I also really love the 60s. I'm a big Beatles fan. Okay. Growing up, I was really into the Beatles. Really? Okay. You know, I have yeah. the Meet the Beatles, the actual vinyl album. I have. It. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have. It. My, My mom actually it has... My mom has a the Beatles doll still packaged in their original packaging. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's awesome. As, as a kid. That's but yeah, awesome. I remember when the anthology came out, I think mm -hmm. I was like 10 or 12 and my parents were so dumbfounded that I was like super into it. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? That's I know yeah. I love the Beatles. I, I love their I like their earlier stuff a lot more than yes. their hippie stuff. Not nothing's wrong with it because the stories in the hippie songs are actually pretty good, but just the feel good, meet the Beatles. I maybe. agree. I like that better. So Amy, yeah. how can we find you, my friend? Uh, so uh, Instagram is probably the best. That's what I use the most as far as a social platform. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just Amy Terry 8Z Realtor. Okay. Um, and then old school, if you want to email me, it's just Amy Terry at 8Z.com. Okay. Um, but yeah, my, my Instagram has a link tree that has a, you know, take you all over the place as far as learning more about me. Beautiful, beautiful. And so to me one last solid and leave me with one last knowledge nugget that we can take with us, internalize and take action on. So this is something for all the ladies out there that yes, I, uh, you know, mentor shared with me that I thought was very cool. We're kind of working within our brokerage to get more women into the leadership position. Mm -hmm. And so we were sort of brainstorming and we, you know, a person, basically I had passed on some really good opportunities and she had shared with me, look, that the men in our company, their job is to make space for us, but then our job is to step into that and own that space. Mm. So that has just like always sticks in my head. Now, every time I get an opportunity, like it's my job to step into that if I really want to grow okay. and change. And really that's for everybody, but particularly women, we can't bitch about not being in a leadership position when you yeah. pass on opportunities. Right. Thank you. Because a lot of people, you know, you know, like I, I say this and people don't really like it all the time, but winners make adjustments, losers and mediocre people make excuses, right? Mm -hmm. And winners going to adjust and make themselves fit to that space, right? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for leaving us, leaving us with that. And squad, I just had a really fun conversation with rock star agent and investor, uh, Amy Terry. You know, she's passionate about helping people build their wealth through real estate. You know, she's willing as an agent to walk away from money to help you build your wealth, which is absolutely uh, fantastic. You know, she brought up different terms that you might want to Google, but if not, I'm sure that Amy would explain them to you. If you reached out to me, I can make a warm induction regarding house hacking, owner carry and partner flips and whatnot. I would love to introduce you to her because I know that she's going to turn you the right way. And if you're working with a buyer's agent, and they're going to show you your next biggest investment you're probably going to make to that point in your life. Vet them out. You know, go there. Social media is everywhere. Make sure that they're good. Google, Yelp them, whatever. But vet out your buyer's agent because everybody interviews 510 listing agents. Amy reminded us to vet out your buyer's agent. You know, if you're working with someone that you care about, Amy reminded us, you know, share your end goal. You know, find out 
even what their end goal is. So maybe you can help each other get there. She wants you to remind, don't take everything so personal. People's thoughts of you, like people laugh at me because I tell them my New Year's resolution is I, two things. One, I want to make someone smile every single day. And I just got Amy. She smiled. And two, unless I've hurt you, disrespected you, owe you, or judged you, I give zero, you know, what's what you think about me. So don't take the stuff personal because there are people, people that have a problem with you, it's something that's deal, that they're dealing through, okay? Be empathetic to them, but don't take it personal. She wants to remind us that what we focus on expands, you know? And as an agent out there, if you're an agent, you might feel you're like you're struggling. Amy reminded us there's a market in every market. Like I know that when I was printing money, selling houses from 2000 and 2008, that was easy. And then I had to shift into short sales because that was the market. That's what Amy will help you. It, it helps her clients, you know, find the market. She helps her agents that work for her find the market. She's genuinely someone, I said this during the podcast, but does it for the intention, not the attention. She's not out showing off. I mean, she's a stunning woman, but she's not out showing off what she's earned and what she has. She's there to provide service. And again, she's planting trees. She's never going to sit in the shade of. And what's important to her is deep connections with family, friends, loved ones, having that financial freedom, living that life of, you know, options, not obligations. She's somebody that works her nine to five to make sure she makes her money, but she then she works her five to nine to build her life and her wealth moving forward through real estate investing. You know, she, lastly, especially if you're a woman, um, according to Amy, but if you're a man as well, but step into your space. If it's there, you don't know how. Find a way and get there. Don't make excuses, make adjustments. That's what my good friend Amy does. She levels up her health. She levels up her wealth. She's humble. Yes, she's hungry. Again, she's absolutely stunning. She's earned a varsity letter here at Time to Shine today. Thank you so much for coming on, Amy. I absolutely love your guts. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Chat soon.